You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. I will be joined this morning live by Public Affairs Analyst Ezekiel Nyaitok. Good morning. Good to have you in the studio. Yes. Always well, We can pleasure. actually do that <laughs> in person. Thank you, Jordan. Fantastic. So good to be here. So Thank good. You. Feels good. I love the studio. It's just... I hope I'll be able to concentrate and talk. It's really <laughs> There's a lot. All right. Let's begin with the Punch newspaper this morning. The headline reads, El Rufai attacks governors over strike. NGF moves 318 naira per litre fuel price. The writers read, certain political interests bankrolled NLC to destabilize Kaduna, alleges governor. We're dealing with a tyrant. Industrial action may be escalated, says Waba. NLC suspends strike as FG summons El Rufai and Labour Fogs attack Secretariat. Above the headlines on the Punch newspaper, National Carrier, Ministry prepares memo, plans 2022 takeoff date. Also, $189 million clinical trial, others ground local COVID-19 vaccine production. Senate considers bill criminalizing ransom, proposes 15-year jail term. Attacks on INEC facilities orchestrated aggression. That's according to Yakubu. Below the headline on the Punch newspaper, uh, Ogun threatens clamp down on estates, alleges illegal development. Alleged IPOB planned attack on Lagos propaganda chief, ex-minister. NECO shifts Unity Schools exams over low registration, picks June 5. Dangote truck caught with 600 smuggled rice in Ogun. Three arrested. Police invited as Ondo couple kill two-week-old baby during brawl. Sultan advocates dialogue. Can President laments killings, fears famine. And also in the Punch newspaper, reps probe Max Air, aeroplanes, bird strikes. Emir escapes death. And lastly in the Punch newspaper, 127 south-south Southeast cops killed 25 stations raised, and that's according to a report. All right, now on the Nigerian Tribune. There will be no war in Nigeria, says the Sultan. Disintegration, not a solution, says uh, Khan. On the United States, the federal government punish those behind recurring cases of school children kidnapping, warns Africa over relationship with China. Ibadan meeting, PDP governors blast APC over criticism. Also on the Nigerian Tribune this morning, Senate considers bills seeking 15 years jail term for those who pay ransom to kidnappers. And two more offices uh, burnt. 2023 poll in danger, Einik Boss says. Voter registration, by-elections threatened, he also says. So this morning, fourth mainland bridge to cost $2.5 billion, says from the Lagos government. And national carrier to now take off in 2022, says the federal government. Bandits kill eight, burn church in Kaduna. NDLEA intercepts 4.9 million uh, Naira Tramadol, uh, 4.9 million Tramadol capsules in rivers. And also, labor suspends strike. Federal government invites El Rufai and NLC to meeting. Thugs invade NLC secretariat. We can't be intimidated, says Ayuba Waba. Those are the big ones on the Nigerian Tribune. All right, moving on now to the Guardian newspaper. Um, it says, why foreign direct investment in property sector dries out? Also, Huriwa writes, Biden, others on genocide in Southeast. Labor suspends a five-day warning strike in Kaduna. FRC alleges 32 agencies failed to present audited accounts. These are stories on the Guardian newspaper. And lastly, Nigeria, others to receive fresh $150 billion from World Bank. And now on the Nation newspapers, Sultan says Nigeria's problems won't lead to war. Bandits kill eight, burn church in Kaduna. We can also find this morning $700 million looted cash returned in four years, says Malami. Or your APC kicks as Makinde pushes on with council polls. And governors okay debt reduction, judicial and legislative uh, autonomy. NGF silent on Asaba declaration, removal of petrol subsidy in order. 
Also, burning our assets uh, threatens 2023 polls, says INEC chairman. We can also see here, federal government brings LRFI and NLC to negotiation table. Uh, 4.9 million tramadol capsules seized at airports. And also a national carrier to take off in 2022. Pretty much the same stories, um, both on the nation and the Tribune this morning. I think we can quickly, Joe, go to our guest, uh, Mr. Kenya Talk. Thanks for joining us once again. Thanks uh, for having me in this awesome studio, I said that again. Um, yes. All right, so, so let's start with the, um, first of all, the suspension of the strike um, in uh, Kaduna State. Yeah. Uh, the federal government, of course, reported yesterday, has uh, decided to wade in and bring the two parties uh, together. Uh, Yuba Waba says that this is uh, done to allow a uh, place for dialogue. How do you think this will go? Uh, two things. First, I want to thank the Minister of Labor for wading in or weighing in whichever one. And um, secondly, as much as um, there are certain things about El Rufai that I find um, troubling, but I actually do have a lot of respect for him. Maybe his methods or his approach may not be too good. And um, a lot of times, I mean, he's haunted by uh, probably not thinking through processes. And I think it's something that a lot of people need to learn, people in office. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't react to your present circumstance, the here and now. It, there's, there's a disconnect in his personality. One, he has capacity for long-term planning, where it concerns him. On the other, the other hand, if he needs to get something, he, he, he also acts in a way that is almost irrational. For instance, uh, when he needed to get into power, he was extremely vicious in attacking, you know, uh, pre um, then President um, Jonathan. And, and when he was with um, PDP, he, he, he said that P President Buhari was perpetually unelectable, you know? So you, and then you turn around and then you say you, you are with this person, you say the other person is, I mean, there isn't that consistency that is the character of a leader that you need. You, you can't just follow him blindly because it's like, is it serving his interest? So it's like his interest seems to be much bigger than larger interest. And when you are a public servant, larger interest must um, overtake your personal interest. That's a problem I have with him. But you see, this issue of ghost workers and right sizing, there is no, there's no alternative to it. So in, in principles, his decision is right. But when you want to take such a decision, it's only proper that you communicate to your people this is what we are having. 90% of our resources is being spent on this level of people. Yes, they are a critical sector, but can't we have an understanding and have a midway approach to this? By so doing, the first thing is that you get a public buy-in. That people is like, if we're able to save this, we'll be able to do one, two, three. Don't be, don't act like a dictator. Don't, no matter how noble your intention is. So basically, you, it's Elrufai's approach. Approach, approach is, is really, really not it at all. But in terms of what should be, we must look at the civil service. We can't continue this way. So I think that uh, labor also, um, they need to think of those who pay their bills. It's not only about them. You need to think about those who pay. Their, are they aware that we are those that pay their bills? And that we need to be alive to be able to pay their bills. We need to be, the, the society needs to be vibrant, needs to be working well, and um, that their bills come from either oil or, you know, internally generated revenue. Those revenue will come from the society being okay so that people have jobs to do and they're able to pay their taxes. The companies are vibrant, they're able to pay their taxes. So they have to think both ways. And... We don't have this capacity to balance our thought pattern, you know, the long term and the short term. We're always on here and now. So I pray that um, the, the Minister of Labor will be wise enough to let people see reason for a compromise. Once mm. a compromise is struck, if you are letting off people and Labor says, take care of them is just commonsensical, is right. Labor is right within that context. Mm -hmm. But labor to say, you can't do it, it's not, it's not going to work. We can't do it and it will be right. done, but done right. We'll see how the meeting goes.
Okay, uh, still on the Punch newspaper, we saw a, a, a report basically about just how much attacks have been orchestrated against security uh, formations in the country. Uh, the report said uh, 127 policemen attacked, about 25 police stations attacked as well, raised in several you know, states in the south, south and the southeast. Looking at this vis-a-vis -vis the 2023 elections, vis-a-vis yeah. -vis insecurity, yeah. How are we supposed to check this as a nation? I think the time has come when, you know, I was talking with somebody, I don't want to be um, location specific. And I said, when will this project be completed? You know, somewhere, I travel a lot, all the states of this country. And I also have working relationships with a lot of the government. And I said, when will this project be completed? And the driver, said, sir, please, we know what made the complete project. We just said, when will this administration be completed? May they leave all the project. May they just fast forward. May they finish the administration. You understand me? And I found it very instructive. People have come to a point where they are so, so unhappy with the system that they are asking, when will this leave the project? Just don't do anything again. Can you just fast forward and let the administration just go, okay? And that is one of the states of this country. Like I said, I don't want to be location specific because it actually applies to so many other states. Coming down to why I say that is that we have not really sat down. I did a video and I run a radio program that is very popular in, in Akwaibom. And I asked my people, are you aware of the implication of what you are doing? I even talked to the ESN, you know, and the IPOP people. I said, look, let me tell you something. If you don't cool down and do things properly, you may be smiting your nose to spite your face. You may inadvertently give reason. By the time you attack INEC, you attack um, the police and everything, and then the police are off the road and the insecurity escalates, the people will no longer be behind you. Yeah, but it's still not been established if it's the ESN or no, IPOB I, who's... Uh, I, know, I know where yeah. I'm coming from. Okay. Distance yourself very well from it and then let people interrogate and see who is behind it. Because let me tell you something. We must make the South so peaceful that the military have no reason to intervene in our own, I'm from the South, okay, in our own larger interest. Because the, if we give inadvertently, in any way, the police, the, the military, the right to intervene, these people will dislodge from the South all the elements that you could use to protect yourself and will become extremely vulnerable. There are lots of conspiracy theories in Nigeria. One is the, maybe the, the, the annexing of the South by the North. It's one of the conspiracy theories, fulanization, agenda. These are conspiracy theories you cannot dismiss with a wave of the hand. So the question is, if in the North there's so much insecurity and we don't have that power is might and really boom, and then in the Southeast there is level of insecurity and the federal government says, Boom, let's get in there. And then, you know, I heard a story, I'm trying to verify that the uh, Attorney General once compared, you know, banning open grazing to, you know, banning spare parts cells or something like that. And, and I want to say that spare parts is, everybody knows, the work of the Igbos. Okay? And if the South bans open grazing. Don't zero in to spare parts because the Yorubas, you know, we're just discussing. Don't, they are not into spare parts. I'm from Akwaibom, we're not into spare parts. So it's like a certain profiling, there's a certain mindset, there is certain agenda, and these things don't help our conversation. Yeah, but, but I would just quickly mention, you yes. know, um, you know it, it, it almost sounds like, um, you know, the Southeasterners need to um, lay low, you know, and even lay lower than any other part of uh, 
of the South, you know, simply because they, they need to be on the good on the good side, which you know, which is it's unfair. And yeah. what I'm saying so is even yeah. prior to you know the attacks on security um, yeah. um, 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 outfits and yeah. you know anic offices, yeah. there have been military operations in the yeah. southeast. Yeah. The crocodile smiles one and two yes. have been in the southeast even yes. before some of all those things happened. Yes. So it it hasn't really been because of yeah. the you know these attacks that you know the federal government has decided oh we need to go into the southeast. You see, there are two things. The first is that when they talk of the concept of giving a dog a bad name to hang it, when you are perceived as the dog, the first thing you do is strategy. That's the very first thing you do. There are some times where you may need to be silent. There are some times where you need to have strategic relationships and buy-ins and don't get isolated. If I was to advise the Southeast, I would say, look, do everything humanly possible to buy, to get the, the buy-in of your neighbors. Form a strategic alliance. So how can IPOP do that now in the ESN? No, not IPOP. I'm talking about the leadership the of, of the well. Southeast. Well, uh, uh, Form a strategic alliance. Even if it's trade, what does it take for the traders in, 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 in Newe and Onicha to network with Cross River to ensure that the Calabar port is made active, while at the same time letting Lagos know that they are not going to be disenfranchised because Lagos is not going to join you if they feel they are going to be removed. Well. Now, the deep sea port is coming up in Ibaka in a quiet boom state, which is going to be probably one of the biggest, largest, most in To what extent is the South is bringing their muscle to bear in all these things? And if on account of self-preservation, when a quiet boom people will see that these guys are coming to a network with us and, you know, once they are there, they are the major traders, there's going to be boom and everything. Right. Because of our interest, We'll be compelled to say, Mr. leave Mr. South East alone. Yeah, <laughs> because, so, because I need us to also chip in, you know, yes. our thoughts on the 15-year uh, sentence. But, you know, once again, you know, it, it still sounds like yeah. Southeasterners need to go the extra mile, yeah. more than any other part yeah, of the country. Yeah, it's unfair. It's unfair on them. So that's, that's what I'm pointing unfair. out. Um, it's absolutely they, unfair. They don't necessarily have to go. They, they have equal rights with every other person across the country. So they don't need to cower themselves or, you know, look for these relationships that you're mentioning. No, they need to. Um, you, see, you see, sentiment does not solve a problem. We want solution. People want to kill me. What do I do? First is that I can okay. defend myself. So, so Second is that I can network with my neighbors. So we are, You've got to put all the cards on the table. Well, that, that means, it's unfair That means we are accepting that there is some propaganda against Oh, yes, okay. yes, there is. So, I, I, let, I, let's quickly I, I speak on that. the 15-year uh, jail term uh, proposed for paying a ransom. Let me say this. We need to come to a time when we understand what governance is. We don't seem to have people who understand governance in government. Mm. When there is a situation, question number one is, how do we take the wind off the sail? What is the wind? Where there's light, and you know that oxygen, I think it's oxygen, yes, I'm trying to remember my chemistry long way back, helps the light to glow. How do we cover that light so that we starve it of the oxygen and the light will just naturally go off, okay? Kidnapping is a major enterprise. The returns on the investment is unimaginable. It's like arm robbery. In fact, it is it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it's the softest part of arm robbery, okay? Mm -hmm. Because all I need to do is I spot you, you have a KV that is high, kidnap value that is high, and I wait. And I just pick you. Okay? And I ask ransom. And before I know, I have 10 million. Which if I was working, I will not see that in, in decades. Because it's so enterprising. You're not just going to say, oh, stop it. Oh, don't do it. You know, it's not nice. No. You are going to have to kill a fly with a sledgehammer. That's number one. And number two, you've got to know, get Nigerians behind you to know that if we are going to eat the omelette, we must break the egg. 
there are going to be consequences. We must understand the, con the three C's, the chances that come your way, the choices that you make, and the consequences of those actions. When we have leaders that lead from the front, and Mr. President comes and tells us, enough, as from today, there will be no more um, uh, um, there will be no more um, kidnapping. kidnapping. Kidnapping thrives when there's ransom. What we want to do is take the wind off the sail, take the oxygen off the, of the, of the fire. And, we, so we're, and we know that in the process, some people are going to lose their lives. Exactly and what I was going to ask you. Like how many Nigerians? No, how basis? many Nigerians? Because, okay, looking at the situation yeah. of school children, yeah. because we know that um, during the, the whole process yeah. of the last children that were, that yeah. were released from yeah. the Federal College, College of Forestry Mechanization, yeah. there were lots of talk about paying ransom, not paying yes. ransom. Yeah. Some people say they contributed as much as 60 million yeah. to give the bandits. Others say, that, so it's just been a lot of conversation, yeah. even yeah. with this Greenfield yeah. situation. So, yeah. Are you saying that parents should fold their arms I and am watch? I'm saying that when this set of parents pay to get their children, all Nigerian parents should start keeping a lot of money to be paying because it becomes so easy. So some children would die in the process. There must be collateral damage, unfortunately. Wow. But the who's, question, who's, who's, no, 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 please. We need to get this very clear. We need to get this very clear. Is there an alternative? The alternative is for you to have this government that is so good that the snipers are there. Wherever you are, they will come after you. We don't have that government. Yeah, but isn't it, isn't it, you know, the lazy way out to, instead of fixing security infrastructure and architecture, please, that should please ensure... Please tell me, tell me. This, this is what I'm saying. Yes, yes. So, isn't it the lazy way out to... You know, instead of deciding, okay, we're going to do what we possibly can to invest in yeah. our security ar architecture, yeah. Yeah. to invest in every single detail that would make it difficult to carry yes. out the kidnapping. Yes. Instead of doing that, we'll simply just ban paying of ransom. Yes, two things. The very first thing is that, you know, we discussed before now, America banned it. They know how to forecast tomorrow and nip in the bud. You see, Leadership is about taking very hard decisions because before you go to war, in war people are going to be killed. But, but this is but there are this sometimes is, you need to go to war. Th this is where just for this you is to where have peace on the long run. This is where yes. there's a difference in the U.S. If, a, yes. if an American is kidnapped, yes, you, we all know what the Americans did to rescue their. I citizen. agree yeah. with you, but. So the Americans have faith. And if the American government says no payment of ransom, yes. it means that they are taking sole responsibility yes. of rescuing that yes. American citizen. Yes. Does the Nigerian government do the same For thing? For where we are today, let's keep paying ransom. And I'll tell you that 10 years down the line, you'll come back and play this record and say, no. yeah, I took, I'm coming, I'm coming. I wish we had, unfortunately taking that hard decision. So my thoughts aren't, okay. aren't in support of paying ransom. Yeah. My thoughts are to wake up, you know, um, the, the Nigerian government to realize that it is still their responsibility that to rescue the That Nigerian government life. is not going to wake up. It's going to be beating a dead horse. The responsibility is on us now to interrogate the people that we give our powers to. We need to come to that. You see, right now, I've stopped blaming leaders and leadership. Because it's like expecting a dog to meow or a cat to bark. Oh. These people are entrepreneurs. They came to us, offered us so much humongous money. A man pays 10,000 naira per vote. And you think he's doing that to save, and you collect that money. You are being, you are being, you are not thinking. It's like playing draft. You play draft. He gives you one, you chop. He gives you another one, you chop. He gives you the third one, you chop. I mean, this is a game. Some days you tell, mm -mm. and then the next thing you had is, pam, 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 pam. King, and you're like, hey, you're silly. What are you doing here when you were taking and taking and taking? Oh. Didn't you know that it was a game? Uh -huh. We need to understand that politics is a game right now and start to look for people okay. with competence, capacity, and character to put in office to manage. These are people that will take decisions that will take us where we need to go. All right, right. Mr. Ayato. We appreciate your time and your thoughts as always. Good to have you in Lagos. Oh. You guys actually look more handsome and more pretty than I've been noticing. Thank and your you. studio is <laughs> all the time. really good. You to get, that there. get that all the time. <laughs> Thank you but very he's, much. He's actually a very nice, good looking guy. Um, I would need my glasses. Little wonder you're always like um, <laughs> turning to look at him. We need to go. Thank you very much once again.
All right, stay with us. Uh, today in history, 20th of May, I'm going back to the year 1927 to tell you about one of the um, well, richest countries in the world and the day that they gained sovereignty. And I'm going to tell you something very twisted in just a minute.